Hey everyone, welcome back to Fishing the South Okanagan. I'm Robert. Today I'm going to show you how I use a uh, finesse technique for bed fishing uh, for bass here in the Okanagan. Now, as a disclaimer, yes, I realize that some out there don't feel right about uh, bugging bass while they're trying to do their business of making babies. Uh, but it is, it, to me, it's an exciting time of the year to get your personal best in the easiest way form you can possibly uh, uh, do. Um, for example, a uh, buddy of mine that I took out uh, last year, uh, never bass fished in his life, um, came, uh, we went out to Asuius, he caught his personal best, uh, and then within an hour or so, broke it. Like, absolutely shattered it. It was, the first one I think it was four or something, and he broke it by a few ounces, but nonetheless, he got his new personal best. I think it was 411. So, yeah, it's quite respectable. You can get, like, dirty, dirty pigs, like, on the bed. Like, 612 was even recorded this year for the spawn absolute monster it was huge I know because I've caught a 612 on the studios during the spring but that's a different story so anyways um, the baits that I use is all finesse uh, you, you got your your, uh, your neds your small tubes uh, as I mentioned you know the neds you know like the, the pink it's anything that I can see in the water because you're sight fishing. If you have a natural color, chances are it's hard to see and you can't really justify of whereabouts the bed is to see if the uh, bass itself is gonna hit. Um, the actual temperature of the water is from, I think, 52 to uh, late 60s is, you know, the ideal time to, uh, for the water to warm up. Uh, anything below that, then they're back down at the transition, uh, waiting for the warm water to uh, rise again. Um, one, uh, one other thing, uh, the fellow that I was uh, fishing with last year that uh, got his uh, personal best, he was actually using a Zoom four inch uh, mini lizard. And it's any creature bait, um, anything, basically the bass will hit just about anything because they're trying to get that uh, little annoying little bug or something that's really annoying that shouldn't be there off their bed. And it is so exciting and so fun to do. It is, you know, it's almost like Disneyland for bass fishing. You know, you want to go, you go and you enjoy it and just can't get enough. It's Candyland. It's mint. Absolute mint. Um, so one of the baits, as I showed before, uh, is for Neds is, and Straight King has come up with some Neds and it looks like so good. I'm very, very impressed and excited to use them. Uh, for example, the uh, Rage Tail Baby Bug. And that's it right there. Now mind you, the heads I, I do myself, that is, I believe, a 1 16th uh, Ned head. And then they have the uh, uh, Rage Ned Cut R Worm. And this here you could probably use on a small chatterbait as well. And like this has that little boot on the back to kick off and disperse water, you know. Like look at that thing. So cool. Um, and then they have the Rage Ned Bug. Now this one here is the baby to the bug that the three inch I think it is that I use on a uh, swinging football head. As you can see, that's what it looks like. This one here is called Moon Juice. Haven't tried the color yet. 
I will hopefully this season and hopefully it works out. Now my actual bread and butter that I use just about any time of the year is a finesse tube. Um, now what I like to do is use white with pepper. Pepper doesn't really do much with it but it's white. The fact that you know you can, you can skip this thing, you can uh, skip, drag, hop, anything that the bass will hit uh, it'll do. Um, this here you know it comes in a pack of 10 and I actually uh, have this on a um, wacky rig uh, do it a mold that I have. Um, I find that 3 sixteenths is key because it skips a lot better than the quarter and with the ball itself um, if you have a small uh, tube jig, the weighted ones with that, like the teardrop looking ones, if you have that, they tend to sp spiral. Uh, with the uh, head itself, the round head, it just dives, it just goes straight down, it doesn't curl whatsoever. And that doesn't give any line twists on your line whatsoever. So much fun. Um, I've caught a uh, five pounder on this by skipping underneath the dock and it just went to town on it. And, brought it in and man I tell you the colors on them when they get excited like the bars on the side oh so beautiful so mint oh gets me excited right now I want to go fishing but you know a little windy for my liking so yeah do uh, get one get some of these another uh, brand that you can also use and I found these um, majority of my stuff that I find is either through Tackle Warehouse or North 40. Now, I'm not sponsored by them whatsoever. I just enjoy using uh, that company. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, um, right now is not the good time to go down to the border because it's closed because of the COVID. Uh, but when it is open and I do get the chance to go down, North 40, you know, has a wide selection and I cannot say n nothing mean about them. They're such a uh, great group down there and I was fortunate enough when I went to get the gets it jig now this here is their version of the uh, pearl pepper and I saw these when I was uh, shopping down there in the spring uh, before any of this uh, occurred and I'm always thinking when I'm shopping I'm like okay can if I need this how can I use this to my best of my ability of using it on the spawn and this and that like I'm always thinking so yeah I'm gonna hopefully uh, try these when it smartens up and hopefully it does because I really want to get out there okay moving on um, as I mentioned with the Neds uh, there's other uh, types of Neds as, uh, as you can possibly right now see this here is the TRD Tickler Z see that I'll bring one out and this is the Laguna shrimp so it's pink and pink is so easy to see in the water um, you, you can't miss it and bass just you know they'll hit anything as I mentioned before but I think pink is uh, a not well known uh, color that you should possibly look into so as you can see this has tentacles, four of them, and the pink color. Now this here, um, you can pretty much uh, rig like an, um, a Ned, or if you want, you can uh, try a two-aught or a one-aught uh, extra wide gap hook, and it's pretty much called the child rig. So you basically uh, rig, and have the eye of the hook on the top, have the hook down here, and then on the bottom, you have a small weight that you can put in here. Um, Z-Man makes the weights itself, and it makes it easier to get in here. Others are a little tough to get in because this stuff is stretchy. Oh, that reminds me. Um, 
when using the any of the Z-Man products like for Neds and such, easy way to make the uh, bait float because these things are you know elastic. There's there is you know stretch them and they do not break whatsoever. Very key. That makes the little doodad stand up like the Ned itself. Um, and then you know you do the same like uh, this here. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, bubble gum uh, colored, and put it in there and on it. I now normally I use uh, a three sixteenths to a quarter when I'm using beds because because basically when bass make the beds, uh, they make it to the point where you know there's gravel underneath the sand and such, and they fan it away and get the bed to uh, their satisfaction and when you're out there and you cast it out now don't cast it out completely far give it maybe a two feet distance from the bed and either uh, slowly swim it and kill it and then drag it on or just drag it onto it itself and you'll feel the, the sand of like thump 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 and then you'll feel more of a hard substance and that's the actual rock of hitting the actual um, or making having contact with the um, Ned head or the weight you, you know um, The rod that I use is a medium light uh, or even a medium uh, Spinning reel like it's all finesse nothing serious like a medium heavy, but finesse and What I actually use for the uh, finesse part is this Fenwick HMG. This here is a 6.9 medium light fast. Um, and as you can see, I have the, the tickler on there. Um, now this, the uh, business part here, this is a absolute treasure of find. I found this on Facebook Marketplace, oddly enough, for five bucks. This here is a Fluger Tryon reel. These things are so butter. Like the the drag is absolute butter. I have never felt a better drag for something that is so cheap. Like this here, regular price is about mm, fifty bucks, give or take. And I found it on five bucks on Facebook. That's a steal. That's an absolute find. So. Yeah, uh, and then I have uh, all my reels that I have for spinning reels are braid with a fluorocarbon leader. Um, I like braid because you can, it's more uh, sensitive, you can feel more of the bite, and you can't go wrong. It is strong. And then, of course, with the leader, I have, I think that is 8 or 10. And I know it's not as finessey, but... I have found that uh, throughout the time that the, when they're uh, fighting the bait that it ha has snapped off and I've had that done. Um, another one that I use, uh, now that I just remembered, is a drop shot. Um, now some would cringe and shy away from using a drop shot, but it just gives something different to, for the bass to look at and attack. And usually you see the... Um, fish run off with it and I set the hook as, as, as best as I can. Um, the one thing that you want to see is the actual bait. When you're sight fishing, you don't want the bait, you know, half in, half out because you can't really tell if the bait actually has, or the bait, the bass actually has the hook. Uh, basically, they're trying to, you know, shoo that thing off and go back to its uh, business. Um, usually, if you use a long one, like a long bait, they'll grab that end. How I have no idea that they don't see the hook or uh, attack the hook, and they'll go off and poof. And you think you have them, and you go to set the hook, and chances are the hook's not there, it's all bait. And then you got to do it over. Sometimes it takes hours for because you got to really annoy and piss off that bass that badly to bite. Um, one thing I like to do for my drop shot is I love using the Daiichi or Blakemore stand out, stand out hook. Um, and that, if you don't know what that is, uh, uh, Google stand out drop shot hook. 
and you'll see for yourself it is so uh, so easy to use um, usually when you have your drop sh shot hook you know you have it's not you know it goes all over the place instead of having it straight and to the point I like straight to the point it's a lot easier to use um, when it comes to the drop shot as I mentioned I love using that hook but here's the thing I have a red alert hook and what I mean by red alert it is painted red and when bass see red they hit it a lot more than a regular um, stealthy uh, nickel chrome hook um, it's just something to give the bass more of a target and get, it brings the bass in the boat uh, now for the bottom end I usually use about a quarter uh, ounce weight uh, pencil if you want if there's rocks or such even like the little split or not split shot but um, round uh, crimp uh, hook not hook but the crimper uh, to get your line on there and then I leave about oh about a foot give or take six inches to a foot of tag end and uh, that gives them you know if you don't want it if it's you find it's too uh, tall or too long just take the, the line out from the crimper bring it up a bit and cinch it down and then uh, bo uh, Bob's your uncle and you're off to the races so and then the, what I usually use uh, for that is a straight king and I've uh, to be sexy shad uh, mm, pardon me half shot uh, bait and I'll bring it out here in a second come on oh, da, 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 da. experiencing a bit of a technical difficulty right now okay so it's the dream or uh, half shot and these things are so fun to use you can see that right there and when that's in the water the current itself that's one thing I forgot to mention the current that the waves make pretty much you know moves it all around um, I like to nose hook this thing so basically you bring it in and you don't really have the point of the hook um, out some some actually use the first knuckle and bring it all the way through which is fine um, I just find that it gives it more action when you have it halfway in and not really much the point because once you get the hook set into the bass itself you know Bob's your uncle you know you don't have to worry about uh, like you will maybe lose the bait but uh, chances are it might run up your line and then go from there um, another uh, good one to use is the uh, sexy shad uh, dream shot and that one is this one right here now this is the four and a quarter bait same color as the half shell and this thing here you know they'll hit anything that uh, comes into their contacting of the bed but it is so much fun to use and I go through a heck of a lot of them when I'm uh, doing the bed fishing they'll hit just about anything basically is you know like when I rent and rave to my buddy Eric down at OMAC uh, he's the he, you know He's a really good guy. I love hanging out with him and learning off of him. And I tell him about the, the bass uh, spawning and everything else. And he's like, well, well, that's great, but they'll hit anything that you put on the bed, which is true. So basically the reason I use like a color like that or uh, like a chartreuse and blue, like the, another dream shot is the, uh, the chartreuse and blue is basically easy to see and you can also I forgot to mention another color you can use to your advantage is yellow or chartreuse because here in the Okanagan there's no shad whatsoever as much as the uh, guys and the pros down in the states talk about the shad there's no shad here we have bluegill we have perch we have trout we have salmon 
so there's no shot here. So yeah, so that's a, a great color right there. Uh, I first learned about this color through my buddy Raul down in the coast, and he actually had it as a as you know this bait here, and it was way before I had my boat, and we were uh, doing the um, what was it the beast or the May Long Weekend uh, Fun Tournament that uh, the group I belong to uh, down here in uh, the South Okanagan had no boat whatsoever and since it was a fun tournament we were allowed to go bank fishing and uh, so we would pretty much you hop in my car with all the rods run around to spots where we thought we could find fish and lo and behold I, I was not very confident with the drop shot put one of these uh, bad boys of the chartreuse and blue and it was lights out like I caught the one of the biggest yeah at that time a largemouth and I was so happy. I think it was damn near a four pounder. It was so huge. And it was two of them swimming around and all of a sudden it was uh, kind of like a small leaves like uh, down on the water underneath the tree and plopped it in there and all of a sudden I saw my line run off. So I immediately set the hook and you know it was game over. It was so much fun to use. Right now, I have so much confidence in my drop shot, more than I did uh, years ago. So, that's one thing to use and get, in, get into, because it is so much fun. Um, yeah, so uh, keep in mind when using the bait itself to have bright colors. You want to see that bait. You want to see whereabouts it is, if it's gone where the bass actually has it in the mouth, to actually go and try and set the hook. Um, when you feel, you'll feel that bite when your rod literally, like ever so slightly loads up. When it does, you know, set the hook and start reeling in. Um, normally when you're uh, seeing the bass bed, is we fire out to any dark spot in the shallows at, at any uh, given day uh, when the spawn is happening. Uh, bass are notorious for uh, pretty much smallmouth. Not so sure about largemouth, but with smallmouth, the, uh, they are very notorious for coming back to the same spot every year. The males come, the females roam about to find the right mate and the, if they like the bed and uh, what, where the location is, chances are they'll actually uh, go with that male. Now, if you happen to find two bass on one bed and they're going about their business, chances are you very, very slim to none will you be able to catch both of them because they're busy doing their thing and you can try to your face is blue to try to catch those two fish. Basically, you have to go and find the uh, males the single males where they're out doing their business. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, funny enough, if you happen to find a stick in that bed, it is not put there by someone to mark where the, they've been fishing. The bass actually do that themselves. They will go grab a stick and lay it in their bed just for the eggs to something to stick to. Pretty cool, huh? I honestly thought for the, the longest years because I see any stick and it's usually cut off, like a clean cut, but nope, apparently the bass go and grab any stick that they can usually find and bring it over to their nest or the bed for easy access of having the eggs laid upon. That's pretty cool. I found that out last year actually. So. Other than that, um, so yeah, the using the Ned, drop shot, uh, finesse tube, anything like you can use finesse to uh, uh, bring the fish into your boat. Chances are more uh, chances than none. You'll be using one more one bait more than you do what you have on, on your boat, and it is as it happens to me all the time. Mm, pardon me. 
chances are like I can remember like last year the majority of stuff that I caught on uh, the for bed fishing was a drop shot uh, one year it was pretty much the tube and I can even remember even way before even the net came to uh, into town or into into play I would pretty much make my own by using a stand-up jig from owner and use a zoom um, um, trick worm and I actually I have them right here give me one second it's these guys right here and that was a uh, almost like a dirt color kind of bait Another good, actually, come to think of it, another uh, one you can really try is the uh, shaky head. I've seen guys use it there, and uh, but the only thing is you have to worry about them, you know, hitting this. Uh, usually, you want like something very small to uh, get uh, them, so they don't have as much chance of grabbing more bait than actual hook. And uh, yeah, so right there. Another good one to actually use is the wacky, wacky rig for like a sinkhole or such, or even like a little trick worm. You know, have it have a hook right in the middle here, and it goes, bring it down. Like, heck, you could probably even use a small Nico rig uh, and bring it through, and that'll get hit like nobody's business. And again, as you can see, this is the uh, white ice. Um, it's just easier to see um, when you're, you're sight fishing. Um, you really want calm, slick uh, water. You don't want any ripple whatsoever because it is hard as hell to find whereabouts the bass is sitting. You can see the spot. No, you can see the dark spot. No problem. It just you can't really justify of whereabouts the bass is to see if they'll hit it. So you really want calm slick waters uh, what else do, 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 do. another thing you could uh, try is if you have any uh, white or chartreuse or yellow uh, hair jakes you can try them and just bring it through and Bob's your uncle I'm saying that a lot aren't I today but it's, it's the actual truth. Um, let's see, what else? Do, do, do. Oh, I forgot one thing. So, Strike King has another one that they came out with. Was the uh, Ned Ocho. And this thing's like a mini cigar. It's freaking huge. That's what she said. Ha! Beat you to it. Yeah, look at this thing. I think it's freaking huge. This thing is all like this. Here is the morning dawn, and like it, it's like in comparison to the Ned. Let me bring it out. That's what she said too. Like in comparison, look. Like, like the thing is freaking huge. A lot, a lot wider. That's for sure. So yeah, I thread it on. Actually, you know what? We'll do it right now just to show you guys how it's done. So uh, you basically want to go where the cut part is because this is the, the business end. This is pretty much what wiggles in the water. And what I like to do is figure out whereabouts the hook is going to go. As I can see, there's the egg sack right here. And you pretty much line it up as best as you can. So basically I'm coming out of the uh, egg sack. So bring it through. there so 
cinch it down. Now the great thing with the Do It brand is the fact that they have, you can have it as a, like a hook keeper. So that ain't really coming off. If you want to feel more uh, confident, you can add like a little bit of a silicone uh, crazy glue and right underneath the head there and just to cinch it in there. And you know, there you go. So I'm looking forward to using these. Uh, uh, when I first saw it on um, ta Tactical Bassing, they did a, a small Ned video of the new products coming out. And I was very excited to see that, them come out with, uh, or Strike King, come out with the actual baits itself. So yeah, you can, you can see right there, I have it, uh, the, it cinched. And that's as far as it goes. If you don't have it cinched down, chances are you're gonna have it out like this. Have it like that, and that's not going to be any good to you whatsoever. Um, Keynote: When you're storing your baits that are not in the bag, especially with Z-Man, uh, do not mix or have them touch any other soft plastic because they will melt and gel together, and it's a one big mess, and it's not fun to clean up. Keep them in their bags uh, and keep them separate from other uh, actual uh, baits. It actually says it on the back, uh, package too. You know, for people that really don't read directions, read the directions. They come in handy. So other than that, um, you know, the drop shot, the tube, the Ned uh, are basically my three key components when uh, bed fishing. So go out, uh, try uh, either or either or of them. If you know how, great. If not. Uh, I will try my best to make a video of how to rig uh, all three. Um, I've actually shown you with the actual net itself. Um, the drop shot, hopefully I'll do soon. And the tube, um, I will do uh, later on. So, other than that guys, you know, uh, take a kid fishing. You will enjoy it more than, or they will enjoy it more than you. And the smiles last a lifetime along with the memories. So take your kid fishing, tight lines, and we'll see you out in the water. Have a good one.